So good afternoon, all of you. I am Dr. Deepak Tambe uh, and my colleague, Dr. Aditya Pavuskar. And now we'll uh, keep it very short and sweet that meniscus preservation by all the eminent faculties in the Wirock Max uh, 2022. <coughs> And we have uh, kept it uh, so short that uh, it will be a six to seven minutes of talk followed by your question and answer session immediately. So I would like to chair this session. Uh, may I like to uh, invite Dr. Aditya Gunjotikar to please uh, chair this session. He is an eminent arthroscopy surgeon from the city of Mumbai. And uh, Dr. Parth, Dr. Parth Agrawal, he is also an eminent arthroscopy surgeon. They will be chairing this session and my colleague, Dr. Aditya Pavaskar, please have a seat uh, uh, there. So we'll uh, start with the first talk, that is the patterns of the meniscus tear and MRI analysis of the same. Dr. Uh, Ajinkya will be delivering this talk and it will be followed by question and answer session immediately. Dr. Ajinkya, please. So the topic is the patterns of meniscus tear and the MRI analysis. So what are the learning objectives of this particular talk? So you will understand the pertinent anatomy and the blood supply of the meniscus. You will be able to classify the meniscus tear patterns. You will be able to read the MRI films for various meniscal signals and interpret them. And you can also correlate the MRI and the arthroscopic findings of the meniscus tear. So first I will start with the anatomic part. So meniscus is the word originated from the word crescent. So meniscus is crescent shaped and on transverse section, cross section it is triangular. You can see the particular, the posterior horn of the medial meniscus is broader as compared to the anterior horn, while in case of lateral meniscus, the anterior horn and the posterior horn both are almost of a same width. This is the particular very important anatomy where you can see the particular the anterior root and the posterior root, particularly the, this one is the anterior horn and the posterior horn and in between the anterior horn and the posterior horn is the body. For the same, these are the roots, this is the intermeniscal ligament which you can see in the anterior region. Then the most important is the blood supply of the meniscus. As you can see in this picture, the blood supply mainly comes from the periphery. So the perimeniscal capillary plexus gives blood supply from periphery to the inner free edge. So the maximum blood supply is at the edge. <coughs> so this is the again the representation of how the zones are divided according to the blood supply. So zones can be in the, from the free edge, it is the white white zone. In between the red white zone and the on the periphery is the red red zone. So you can see the particular tears which are in the particular in this region of red red and the red white zones have a good supply and so these tears are amenable for repair. Then we go ahead with the ultrastructure of the meniscus. In order to discuss the patterns of the meniscus tear, it is very important to know how the meniscus is formed. So you can see at the periphery, the circumferential fibers are there and in between the free edge and the periphery are the radial fibers along with few perforating middle fibers. Then comes the important part that is the imaging. So MRI is the critical tool for clinical decision making and the surgical planning. Meniscal tears are well visualized on MRI on the coronal and sagittal sequences. Sagittal plane, both anterior and posterior horn of the meniscus are visualized. So that one is the coronal view of the particular meniscus of the particular knee joint and this is the sagittal view. This is the fat suppressed due to weighted image. You must have seen that the on the MRI reporting there are various signals they have mentioned that is the grade 1, grade 2. So what exactly are these grade 1 and grade 2 signals? You can see the grade 0 is the signal, you will not be able to see any signal. And the grade 2, in the grade 1, there will be a particular, the intrasubstance globular signal without extension into the articular surface. Then comes the linear increase signal, that is the grade 2, without into extension to the articular surface. And comes the grade 3, where the articular surface is involved. Now we go ahead with the main topic, that is the classification of the meniscus tear. As you can see, these are the particular important meniscus tears which we come across in our routine practice. 
First is the vertical longitudinal tear. So the vertical longitudinal tears, these are the tears between the circumferential fibers of the meniscus. These tears are particularly parallel to the long axis of the meniscus. Means this is the particular circumferential fibers and these tears extend on the parallels of, uh, to the, these circumferential fibers. On MRI you will be able to see this kind of a vertical signal on the serratal images. Also on the axial cuts you will be able to see the particular linear impression. Then comes the bucket handle tears. This is just the extension of the vertical longitudinal tear and <coughs> most of the time it is get displaced. So you can see this is the double PCL sign which is very uh, classical of bucket handle tear of the middle meniscus. Also you can see on the coronal section this is the displaced middle meniscus. This is the arthroscopic image of the bucket handle tear. Then comes the radial tears. In radial tears you can see the particular tear pattern is perpendicular to the circumferential fibers. This is the particular radial tear. And this is how the marching cleft sign is present where you can see there is a cleft between the meniscus. Then comes the parad big tears. Parad big tears are nothing but the radial tears which are not extending into the particular periphery. You can see this is just like a parad big. Then comes the horizontal cleavage tear where the meniscus is particularly the free edge and it propagates to the periphery. On MRI you will be able to see this particular cleavage and this is the particular meniscal cyst which forms after the synovial fluid gets sipped through the horizontal cleavage tear. Then comes the meniscus root tears. Three most cardinal signs are the ghost meniscus sign, the truncation sign where you can see the linear vertical impression on the posterior aspect of the knee joint on the coronal sections and then comes the extrusion of the meniscus where the extrusion more than 3 mm is significant. This is how the meniscus root tear appears on an arthroscopy image. Also you can see the same correlation on the MRI. Then comes the ramp tear. So particularly this strobel introduced the term called the ramp tear. This is just a meniscocapsular separation. You can see this is the meniscus and particularly the capsule is attached to that meniscus. This is for the particularly important for the middle meniscus. On MRI you will see a particular signal between the posterior horn of the middle meniscus and the posterior medial capsule on serratal images. On posterior medial portal view you can see this particular separation of this is the meniscus and this is the capsule. This is particularly the ramp lesion. Then last comes the complex tears where more than two patterns are involved that is the longitudinal tear, the radial tear. Here the appearance looks is fragmented. Also you can see arthroscopic correlation that the particular meniscus is frayed and all the patterns are involved. Here you can see the bucket handle component is there, radial component is also there. So in short we have seen all the meniscus patterns and tears, how they tear. So my take home message is after clinical examination don't trust to see the MRI report. First go through the MRI films and then see the report. Thank you. Any questions? Now I would like to ask the next speaker. And his technique on outside in and inside out technique. Good afternoon everyone. Uh, so I will be uh, after that wonderful talk by Dr. Ajinkya uh, where he described the anatomy and the types of tear. Let's go to the management of these tears. Those are my affiliations. Uh, so the learning objectives would be what are the contraindications and indications to repair a meniscus and an overview of the outside in and the inside out techniques. So why to preserve the meniscus? Several studies which highlight the effects of meniscus tears show that the uh, contact areas are reduced between the condyles after a tear. There are increased contract stresses, decreased anteroposterior stability and increased laxity. Now all these would lead to a faster progression to osteoarthritis if the tear is not treated or after a meniscectomy. So the indications of the repair, uh, what are the patient factors um, that are favorable? So a younger patient less than 40 or an active patient more than 40 years, BMI being less than 30 and uh, the patient will understand the uh, maybe a long drawn uh, physiotherapy protocol and should comply with it. The tear characteristics, the red red and the red white tears are the ideals, ideal ones to repair more than seven millimeters in length. 
the cron city is less than three months and an associated ACL reconstruction is favorable uh, because of the bone marrow that is released in the drilling of the femoral tunnels. The types of tears which again are favorable for repair are the horizontal tears, the longitudinal tears, Radial tears are potentially repairable, bucket handle tears uh, and the root tears. Oblique tears like the flap or parrot beak and the complex degenerative tears are usually irreparable. Contraindications to repair are existing OA of the knee, untreated instability, the white white avascular tears, uh, BMI more than 35 and an existing malalignment of the knee. So going to the inside out technique, uh, what are the indications? So these would be catered to uh, for the posterior horn tears, middle third, bucket handle tears, peripheral capsular tears and where meniscal allografts are being uh, put into place. Inside out techniques are still considered the gold standard. Uh, these because the entry point is known but the exit point is blind, uh, need accessory incisions, posterolateral or posteromedial depending on which meniscus is being treated. Uh, this is just an image of that. The structures which are at risk, uh, on the medial side, the saphenous uh, nerve and vein. Uh, so dissection should be kept posterior to the MCL. Peroneal nerve on the lateral side. So dissection should be kept between the LCL and the bicep femoris. And the uh, popliteal neurovascular structure where there is repair of the posterior meniscal horns involved. Uh, zone specific cannulas and long flexible needles are generally used for these kind of repairs. Just a video of that, this first bite taken through the periphery, uh, meniscocapsular area, the needle is being passed and that pulls the one end of the suture and the second bite being taken through the substance of the meniscus. There you can see the needle and that needle is then pulled out from the capsular side and when that is pulled together, that forms a nice knot over there. This is how it would look after the uh, repair is complete, where uh, one end is through the capsule, the other end is going through the uh, meniscus, and the knots are taken on the capsular side. For the outside end technique, again, anterior horn tears is a, a good indication for doing this technique, and similar uh, indications as were there for the uh, inside out technique. The outside in technique is good because uh, there's minimal inventory, just need a spinal needle and maybe a 2-0 or 3-0 uh, ethylon or uh, uh, proline. Uh, we safer because the starting point is known. Cannulated guides are not needed. This can you know, reduce the risk of injury to the cartilage and uh, smaller skin punctures are needed to pass the knot onto the capsule. Again, a video of the same where you can see that almost uh, red red zone tear now here we are using the meniscal rasp to freshen the edges of the tear. This first bite from outside to in through the capsule, pulling it out through the anterior portal. Second bite through the body of the meniscus. A proline is different colors used and then it's knotted outside and shuttled like you would do in a shoulder surgery and the knot is taken. This is the final reconstruction where you see that two knots were being taken to repair it. So my take home points is um, repair, consider strongly in patients less than 40, tears in the red, 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 white zone and there's an associated ACL reconstruction. Uh, get familiar with one technique or at least two techniques uh, because uh, literature shows that the failure rates of all are more or less similar and what's important in these techniques is to know your safe zones. Thank you. Any questions? Sir, if sorry, uh, sir, if you said that ACL reconstruction is preferred uh, during a meniscus, if there is an ACL associated ACL injury, so how does a bone marrow like help in healing the meniscus? So again, we know that, and there are ma various studies which have been done where we are using PRP, we are using fibrin clot, and so these uh, marrow, the marrow that is released from the cancellous bone is set to again. Uh, aid in the healing of these meniscal repairs. So would, you, would we put a clot uh, while repairing a meniscus? That would be more to be said that... Yeah, but now if you're anyways doing an ACL reconstruction, obviously then you will not. No, but like suppose if it's an isolated meniscus isolated. tear, again literature varies where it comes to using these biologics, fibrin clot and you know, PRP. 
whereas some studies have always said that you know that uh, meniscus will heal better some studies have said that you know it doesn't make a difference so i think we would have to largely go by what you know your your personal clinical experience also is with that thank you sir what number fiber wire uh, do we use for meniscus uh, so we can you yeah sure so we can use uh, generally we use a zero fiber wire or a two zero fiber wire but a zero would be a sturdier one Can I have another mic, please? Sir? So, I have, sir, please go ahead. Please go yeah. ahead. So, we all know that the patients don't come to us early. So, what you is the duration? The tear. After the tear. Yeah, after the injury. Ah. Yes, sir. So, what would be the safe duration beyond which, like, in which you will do the surgery and beyond that you would go to excision so that's a good question what uh, i had mentioned one is 3 months is a rough period what you would say but again it's more about the patient's clinical symptoms uh, what clinical symptoms he is presenting with then secondly on arthroscopy what do you see what the condition of the meniscus is which area the tear is and i think uh, my final decision be, would be uh, when i'm actually seeing the meniscus and what the condition of the meniscus and you know the repairability of it so not so much so uh, just the duration but all these multitude of factors taken together also where there's a younger patient i would tend to take that chance with going ahead with the repair but if someone who's more than 40 i may just go ahead with a meniscectomy uh sorry may i ask a question please go ahead. Yeah. Yes, please go ahead. sir if you see 100 <laughs> meniscus tears sir out of those 100 how many do you think are truly suitable for a repair so a going by so, a percentage sure so going by what i have seen i would say 50 to 60 percent is what i would tend to repair thank S you so much sir we would like uh, to uh, Adit, the last question yeah, sure. uh, what is your approach for the radial tears in the body zone so radial tear uh, what i would tend to do is fit that radial tear is extending up to the capsule uh, I would uh, tend to do a side to side stitch where the red red zone is there and then the uh, uh, zone the zone 3 is where I would just you know uh, uh, do a partial meniscectomy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much sir. We would like to invite Dr. Bhushan Patil sir uh, on his topic for all inside techniques and a ramp repair. Hello. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, at the outset, I would like to thank uh, Organizing Committee of uh, Bombay Orthopedic Society, Vaira. Um, so my uh, topic is all inside meniscus technique and uh, ramp repair. So all inside repair uh, is where we uh, take the bites or they take the sutures on the torn meniscus, especially in the posterior horn and repair this process is all intra-articular where there's no need to take the sutures out of the uh, out of the joint there are specific indications uh, which are posterior horn tear of the medial as well as lateral meniscus they might be in isolation or it is with the bucket handle tear in this uh, in this uh, picture you can see uh, this is the classification uh, this is a medial meniscus posterior horn and this is zone is 0, 1, 2, 3. This is a red, red, white, a red, red zone, then red, white and white. So this is the area where we would like to go uh, for all inside repair technique. And of course, with the newer cannulas and newer systems, the exp uh, there is an extended indication or extended, uh, uh, I mean, in the body also we can uh, do uh, all inside repair, but mainly it is on the posterior horn of the uh, medial as well as lateral meniscus. In these images you can see there is a white arrow showing the menisco capsular uh, tear and the other one is in the zone 1 and 2. So these, uh, uh, these tears are good for uh, meniscal repairs. So as I said, as we discussed earlier, radial tear is a, a very ch uh, challenging because it's at, as good as a meniscectomy, complete meniscectomy. There are a lot of forces acting in the joint after the tear and chances that early rapid arthritis will develop. So it is better in a younger individual, it is better to go uh, ahead with the uh, repair and uh, 
in this uh, this test can be managed with the different uh, devices or all standard all inside is different because we'll see in the coming slides so horizontal cleavage tears especially seen along with the discoid meniscus in the younger pe pediatric population and degenerative so we tend to repair mainly discoid meniscus horizontal cleavage tears so that this uh, this pediatric age population will not have arthritis later on so there are a lot of challenges in the lateral meniscus repair. First is tight compartment. On the medial side, if the compartment is tight, then we can go ahead with the pie crusting. But on the lateral side, there are limited, uh, um, limited joint space. So you have to have good assistant, which will give you figure of four position and open up the joint for the procedure. So next is proximity to the neurovascular bundle. So there are a lot of studies going uh, seen in the pediatric age group. The only the popliteal artery uh, behind the posterior and home, the lateral meniscus is uh, from ranging from the three to four millimeters. When the adult, it is up to six to eight millimeters in the. Uh, from the posterior horn of the uh, lateral meniscus, especially in the extended knee, and we, of course without distension. And the common parallel now also is the co close pro proximity to the popliteus tendon. It is approximately 13 to 18 millimeters away posterior laterally to the popliteus tendon. So there are two schools of thought. One, one group of people say we can uh, get a uh, penetration through the popliteus tendon, but eventually, of course we are damaging the popliteus tendon while doing that, but eventually it might fail because the moment of the popliteus during flexion extension and one French surgeon says we can go ahead and uh, uh, fix the lateral meniscus tear through the uh, uh, popliteus and uh, fix it yeah so in this figure you can see uh, in the picture you can see this proximity of the uh, popliteal artery just behind the lateral uh, root of the uh, uh, peripheral part of the lateral meniscus hardly 6 to 8 millimeters so why it is important to is when we are doing uh, this is a viewing normally this is anterolateral is a viewing portal and this is a working portal and uh, to avoid this we can go anterol anteromedially so that the trajectory of the uh, needle would go away from the uh, um, posterior horn the steps to avoid is again, as I earlier mentioned, figure of four position to open up the joint, not only to open up the joint, but to keep the vessels away. When in flexed position, they tend to go away from the uh, uh, posterior horn so that we get uh, in, enough space. So the, uh, this uh, posterior 10 millimeters is the crucial zone behind which there is a, uh, the proximity of the artery. Penetration has to be limited 12 to 14 millimeters and possibly it should be passed to the anteromedial uh, portal so that trajectory goes laterally away from the uh, neurovascular bundle. So devices used are all inside technique are different with anchor without anchor we can classify. So with anchor normally what we use is, is there are many companies coming up uh, have this uh, their different guns and uh, you should be familiar with that mechanism outside before uh, before uh, starting the procedure and uh, of course you have to consider all the points before you can have good anatomy of the posterior part. I'll just go to this uh, radial tear as we earlier discussed. It is challenging and there, has, there, there are different con configurations for the uh, repair, hashtag or rip stop and mattress, double mattress suture. Ramp lesions are the lesions where the earlier this has been described by the uh, colleague and uh, this, this type 4 is the most common here. This is longitudinal tear and the ramp region. Sometimes there are additional bucket handle type of tears. This is the most commonly seen and is very challenging. Normally what, what uh, we should do in do diagnostic orthoscopy is we, put a, uh, we should put a needle from the posterior uh, medial portal and uh, once the needle is inside, we have to lift up this area and check for the tear if it is there. Otherwise, this is supposed to be a hidden lesion and most of the times it is missed. And in a chronic uh, scenario or when we, the patient comes for a revision surgery, most of the time this has not been repaired and that can be the cause of failure of the ACL and there are two three ways uh, either if it is possible you can lift up the capsule and put all inside devices from inside the joint or if it is not possible some people say this is shoulder in the knee joint because this is kind of shoulder surgery inside the posterior medial people who have been doing uh, PCL reconstruction arthroscopies they are familiar with this approach and it is easy for them so we can put a uh, metal lasso or lamp, ramp lasso from posterior medial portal and take a bite through the capsule as well as the peripheral meniscus and put a sliding knot to fix that. This is a uh, video, of, uh, I'm sorry for this time delay. This is, uh, in this, uh, after this trepanation preparation of the peripheral part, this is the cannula, this is the depth. This cannula will avoid too much of penetration there. Needle is going from the substance of the meniscus towards the periphery. And vertical mattress suture is the better pull-out strength. We avoid taking horizontal mattress suture, but sometimes uh, there is a cost constraint, we take a horizontal mattress also. And now it is going to the periphery 
and the peripheral part of the meniscus so that we get a good uh, compression at the tear site with the vertical, uh, vertical mattress type of co configuration. Excuse me for the delay. Yes. And once, uh, many times what happens is after taking this uh, sutures on the superior aspect of the meniscus, this gets elevated. So to compress that, we have to take a uh, bite or take a, uh, fix the meniscus on the inferior part of the meniscus also. So that this elevated part uh, should uh, settle down later after this. Uh, usually this uh, ratio is two. If we are taking two vertical mattress sutures, there has to be minimum one uh, uh, mattress suture on the inferior portion of the meniscus. So that the ratio has to be two. Two superior sutures, one inferior suture. Uh, and if we can take a horizontal mattress as well, if we have three sutures, vertical sutures, one here, one there and one here, we can take in between one horizontal mattress suture on the inferior portion of the uh, meniscus so that it gets compressed there. Good compression of the inferior part also as well as this uh, elevated part of the meniscus will settle down. So the take home message is uh, in, in all inside technique is uh, very demanding and relatively easy process once we are, uh, uh, we are habitual with that. Uh, but it is challenging and considering all these precautions should be taken and limited space there on the lateral compartment. Uh, and uh, ramp lesion is a hidden lesion, should not be missed. We should uh, always uh, do a diagnostic round in the posteromedial compartment by needle probing and tears uh, which are less than 50 millimeters in acute the ACL tear can be just freshened up the edges to heal uh, if we are doing ACL reconstruction at the same time. And chronic and revision scenario, this uh, ramp lesion should be repaired well. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, I'd like to invite Dr. Nikhil Agarwal for his talk on meniscus root thank repairs. Uh, we'll do the question answer yes. session for this talk later on. Uh, very good afternoon, everyone, and thank you, Yrock organizers, for giving the opportunity. My topic is on uh, meniscus root tears, which I, uh, which is generally known as the silent uh, epidemic. Uh, myself attached to uh, Jagjivan Ram Railway Hospital, Mumbai, and work hard. So, uh, meniscus root tears is a silent epidemic. It is not as rare as once we thought, and often these tears were treated conservatively or by partial meniscectomy, which eventually led to progressive arthritis. And 10 to 21% of all these meniscus tears are meniscus root tears and they are often missed in the clinic as well as on the MRI. Laprade has uh, given a good classification of the root tears and has defined it as a, a soft tissue avulsion or a bony root avulsion or tears which are located within 1 cm from the meniscus root attachment. Out of these, the most common is a type 2 uh, that is a radial tear with, within the 1 cm comprising of up, almost 70% of the root tears followed by type 4. So these are the radial meniscus root tear, how they look uh, intraoperatively. They are within 1 cm of the root and the loading patterns are similar to the root avulsions. And uh, sometimes these tears often are is reported to be 28% of the overall meniscal tears in some series. If the root tears go untreated, they lead to eventually uh, a rapid progress to OA. They are biomechanically compared to total meniscectomy. It uh, leading to the comprised hoop stresses of the menisci, which increases the pressure between the tibia and the femoral pressures and eventually degeneration of the cartilage. So this you can see how uh, after the tear, the contact pressures in the tibia femoral joint increases with this uh, uh, scanning studies. This is a typical uh, history of a meniscal root tear which goes untreated and leading to rapid de degeneration of the cartilage and within 24 months, the patient lands into a UKR. So a lot of uh, good talk has been given by my friend uh, regarding the anatomy. Uh, just to highlight the middle meniscus posterior root is very adjacent to the PCL and the lateral meniscus is about a millimeter posterior to the uh, lateral tibial eminence. It's very important that you, the anatomic footprint is uh, restored during uh, the reconstruction to give the best of the result. Uh, this is a typical patient of uh, a middle meniscus uh, posterior root uh, presenting in the clinic. Uh, they are generally a middle age uh, women or men more commonly in the females of 40 to 60 years age. It may be an acute or a chronic presentation. Generally, they are on a heavier uh, side. 
they are mostly the degenerative type of tears and uh, there is no significant trauma or uh, injury uh, they undergo in 70% of the cases it is without any significant injury however associated in 3% of multi ligament knee injuries so generally these patients come to with a history of a very trivial injury or a jerk while climbing down from stairs or a while uh, stepping down from the bus and uh, they present to us with very sudden onset of very severe pain limping with pain and also give a history of audible uh, pop sound at times so on examination when you see in the clinic there is severe tenderness very uh, positive uh, macmurray test on flexion they wince with pain and uh, extremely minimal to moderate uh, decrease in the joint space you will see when you do the standing x rays and uh, please do order mri and you can see appreciate the ghost sign which is a uh, uh, which uh, uh, represents a posterior root tear this is how the mri picture looks in the sagittal axial and the coronal images you see the ghost sign in the sagittal image a radial pattern in the axial image and a truncation pattern or a severe extrusion you can see in the coronal image the medial posterior root tears are easily diagnosed on mri than the lateral meniscal root tears so this is how a patient 54 male uh, patient pain in the knee since one year it was uh, an old neglected uh, posterior case of a uh, posterior meniscus root tear uh, case who developed into a sponk lesion spontaneous osteonecrosis and with a loose fragment so this what is can happen uh, if you neglect the uh, the root tear the lateral meniscus uh, posterior root tears comparatively ha happens in uh, young patients it's mostly because of trauma mostly they are males and 10.8 times more commonly associated with the acl tears than the middle meniscal root tears and remember 12% of all the acl tear will have lateral meniscal uh, root tears and we should uh, always probe the lateral root because they are missed on mri in the acl reconstructed knee a tear of the lateral meniscus uh, posterior root significantly increase the knee laxity under uh, anterior loading as much as 1 mm so they contribute uh, to the acl uh, stability as well so they must be repaired at the time of uh, your acl reconstruction so what is the treatment of these root tears uh, non operative should be considered in elderly patients who have very severe arthritis or they are asymptomatic chronic tears you can conserve them and if you go land up in partial meniscectomy they will have early good uh, results but later on they will soon develop uh, severe degeneration and arthroscopy root repair is the best clinical outcome what we can have at in the current era so what are the indications always uh, traumatic uh, cases uh, acute presentation you always repair them and in the degenerative cases uh, the indications are still evolving however the contraindication is severe collapse severe virus significant arthritis or a bmi more than 30 uh, so this is the gold standard technique that is the anatomic trans -to portal trans tibial pull out suture technique and these are the two uh, most common used instruments is the knee scorpion and uh, the meniscus root repair jig which you should have uh, uh, while doing this technique also suture anchors have been uh, described suture root uh, anchor repair techniques and uh, this is how you start with the diagnostic scopy you often find the middle compartment is tight since these are degenerative knees you have to do a uh, pie crusting of the mcl and a reverse notch plasty to gain more access to the posterior root and then you the gap opens and you can identify the posterior root uh, so there are a few steps uh, you take a bite with the knee scopy and with few threads and uh, take uh, at least two sutures in the cinch type of fashion prepare the bed and drill the tunnel and uh, shuttle the uh, shuttle the tunnel and uh, get the so the fiber tapes or the fiber suture fibers on the anteromedial aspect of the tibia and get a good repair this is how this is the video of the same uh, you do a pie crusting identify the posterior uh, root often these old uh, tears are attached to the posterior capsule go ahead and uh, release them and then uh, prepare the bed where the attachment is with a sharp uh, curette till the subchondral bone is there take a bite with a suture uh, fiber or a suture tape if you like in the root with help of the knee scorpion coming from the anteromedial portal uh, you can have different type of uh, suture configurations uh, this is my uh, choice for uh, the root repair have two you can also have uh, three and then you drill a tunnel with the help of uh, the meniscus uh, root repair jig which is specially designed for this uh, technique and uh, this tunnel uh, starts from the anteromedial aspect of the tibia a little bit away from the tibial uh, acl uh, tunnel uh sometimes you have to combine this uh, root repair technique with the hto if you have a varus uh, alignment and the rehab after this you should remember is non weight bearing you have to keep this patient for at least 6 weeks range of movement should be restricted up to 90 degree for the first 2 weeks and no leg press exercise or no squatting beyond 9, uh, 90 degrees for 4 months 
So the results are extremely good. Uh, the root repair uh, technique restores the joint contact pressures. All the meta-analyses and uh, systematic reviews have reported significant improvement in both functional and the subjective objective scores. And there is significant uh, lower rate of progression of uh, OA and conversion to TKR as reported by this paper at five years follow-up. So uh, definitely it should be, these root repairs must be looked upon. This is a patient uh, preoperatively wincing with pain and cannot walk. And now just after two months, she has a very good uh, uh, gait. However, one lingering issue of this root repair technique is the phenomenon of post-operative meniscus extrusion which is there. And more work is needed whether to decide or confirm whether the centralizing suture what we take to repair this extrusion really is beneficial or not in the long term. Uh, to summarize, uh, early identification of these patients with uh, degenerative middle meniscal root tear is very, very important in your clinic. Uh, most, often, uh, most often we miss them and treat them as OA knees. We do not advise any MRI. So my uh, uh, message would be advise MRI to these uh, middle-aged women or men who come to your clinic with severe pain. And during arthroscopy, uh, the message to the surgeons is to probe every root which is there. And uh, most of the time with ACL tear, you'll have uh, your uh, lateral meniscal root tears. And arthroscopy root repair surgery is a revolutionary surgery to bail us out from this silent epidemic of uh, arthritis because of these uh, tears. Thank you. Uh, thank you, sir, for your talk. I'd like to invite Dr. Deepak Tambe for his talk on discoid meniscus, affordable in meniscal implants and improved men repair techniques. Good afternoon. Thank you, all the organizers, Dr. Abhijit Kale sir, Dr. Ashish Fadni sir, and Bombay Orthopedic Society for inviting me. I am Dr. Deepak Tambe. I will start the session with the learning objectives for discoid meniscus. Obviously, the diagnosis, the clinical features of the discoid meniscus, classification, and what do we do as a uh, surgery for the discoid meniscus. So, what does it, how, how does it present? It is usually, it is an asymptomatic uh, problem. Patient can have a snap or clunk without pain which may not require any treatment, but snapping with the pain and locking will definitely require to do some uh, intervention. Knee extensor lag can be there. Usually the incidence is around 2 to 5 percent. Lateral meniscus is more commonly involved and always look for the other knee because 15 to 20 percent of the patients are bilateral. So what do we see on x-ray of these patients? So there is an increased lateral joint space you can see uh, hypoplastic femoral, lateral femoral condyle. The tibial plateau on the lateral side, which, which usually is convex, can be flattened. And tibial spine on that side can be blunted. So these are all telltale signs of discoid meniscus, which are seen on digital x-ray. As you see, <coughs> on MRI, there can be a bow tie sign, and the meniscus occupies almost more than 15% of the area of the lateral uh, tibial space. As you go on parasagital sections, there also you can see that the bow tie sign and the meniscus is occupying almost the entire width of the uh, knee joint. The meniscus to the tibial condyle ratio can also be very high, more than 15 millimeter it can be there. So this is on MRI. Usually, we classify them as a complete, incomplete, and RISBA type of uh, discoid meniscus, lateral meniscus. While in first two cases, we have a definite attachment uh, peripherally, incomplete and incomplete type. Complete means it occupies the entire lateral uh, joint. While in third type, RISBA, RISBA type is little unstable and it doesn't have a peripheral attachment. Only to the RISBA ligament, you can see the attachment. So when you scope all these patients, you can find some fat pad in between the ACL and discoid meniscus. You need to debride the fat pad clearly and this is type 1 uh, lateral discoid which you can see that it is extending right up to the ACL. You can see the over surface of the discoid meniscus, the under surface start uh, resecting the meniscus from the anteromedial portal. You may need to change the portal, working portal to enter a lateral portal, you should be having right and left uh, arthroscopy punches as well. It will save time. Routinely debride the fat pad, infrapatellar fat pad to get the vision properly. See the attachment peripherally onto the under surface of the meniscus as well as to the over surface of the menis meniscus. This is the popliteal tendon. This is quite stable meniscus. So go ahead with further 
debridement to make it a saucer shape meniscus looking as normal as possible. This is what I mentioned that you may need to shift your portal to the uh, uh, working portal to the anterolateral portal and uh, debride the meniscus properly. Now we are making resecting and reshaping the meniscus to make it as normal as possible. So what is the end point of all these things? As soon as your clunk is gone on range of motion, if it is not gone, then either you need to further resect the meniscus. This is the tear which has been found in the lateral meniscus. Obviously, the patient presented with clunk as well as pain. So he must be having some pathology into the meniscus substance. So either you need to stabilize that patient or resect it more till the time you uh, do not get clunk on range of motion intraoperatively. So this can be little confusing. This is the bucket portion, uh, handle portion of the bucket handle tear and it is retracted and not reducing properly. So don't mis confuse this with the discoid meniscus. So <coughs> resection and repair is the surgery which we will do at the for the discoid meniscus and the end point is on range of motion there should not be any clung. So you have to repair those. Rarely replacement or transplant uh, may be required for the discoid meniscus. So the patients mostly are asymptomatic. They may have snapping which will not require any treatment. MRI is the most sensitive diagnosis. Check for the other knee. Most commonly resection and repair or saucerization and stabilization is that is what is required. You can see in the hall there are a lot of young uh, arthroscopy surgeon and most of them are from the medical college. Now most of them must be facing this uh, problem that all inside repair which we have shown is little costly. The implants are very costly. So let me go through my techniques. Uh, usually what inventory you require. Uh, do you have ETO sterilizer at your institute or medical college? And MCL tenotomy, do we require it uh, in all the patients? So inventory 2.0 fiber wire, most of the Indian and uh, all standard companies also have 2.0 as well as the tape. These are the three instruments, 2.0 mini suture passing devices. They come in disposable as well as uh, autoclavable instrument. 2.0 knot pusher as Sir Bhushan Sir uh, shown uh, with the cutter and inside out needles with net and loop. All the companies uh, do have this. You can ask your friend to uh, either or any company person to supply that which has already been used and you can make them ETO sterilize at your institute. So this is what uh, I prefer to do in my initial days, MCL tenotomy, even for the medial meniscus resection and that is how you increase the lateral joint space uh, after MCL tenotomy till you get the grade 2 MCL laxity. That is it and that is how you go ahead with the repair technique. So this is a uh, tear along with the cyst. And that is how you probe that tear, you debride that tear, usually with the meniscus probe, this is a routine probe, but with the meniscus probe you debride it, make it rough and then you can make use of a disposable instrument 2.0 uh, mini suture passing devices. Actually it is to be used only once but you can make it etio sterilized and use it for 2-3 cases. That is the 2.0 fiber wire uh, going and that is the 2.0 not pusher along with the cutter. That is also a disposable instrument but you can hire it from your colleague and make it etio sterilized. That is how you take a knot uh, with the same knot pusher and cut the knot. Similarly, you can take multiple stitches as Bhushan sir have already told that 2 is to 1 suture, 1 above and 2 below so that the meniscus is kept balanced and it is not everted or inverted anyhow. Finally, you check whether it is stable meniscus repair or not. Similarly, this we have already seen. This is also a standard needle which you can uh, use it for the uh, meniscus repair from inside out technique. This is also a disposable one but you can use it as per your uh, want for another 2-3 cases to make it affordable. So take home message, tenotomy, I would like to prefer it in most of the patients so that medial joint space is increased and my meniscus repair or uh, root repair becomes very easy even for few cases of meniscectomy. And if it is available ETO sterilizer, you should always make use of that to make it as affording as possible. So thank you very much for that. Thank you so much, sir. It's a wonderful presentation. May I ask the house if anyone has a question for uh, all the presenters?
you always uh, repair it or you can leave these stairs in the discoid meniscus can you leave them also alone see as uh, as far as possible if it is stable uh, uh, resection and uh, yeah. saucerization we'll leave it like that but most of the cases you will find a tear definitely which needs repair how much you will keep uh, the peripheral portion the portion and uh, what is your uh, criteria to fix this uh, horizontal cleavage which is remain there stabilize the horizontal cleavage so horizontal cleavage has to be repaired there is no other option 15 millimeters of meniscus till you can see uh, that it is normally occupying the joint space you have to keep it like that so uh, dr nikhil uh, i'd like to ask you uh, so where your root repair your talk was wonderful uh, so which are the root repairs which you will leave alone so say on arthroscopy you see them and you leave them alone Generally, uh, these uh, the anterior root tears, uh, we can leave them alone. We can just shave it off and no need to repair. And uh, the posterior root tears, if it is a chronic degenerative with severe arthritis, then you just shave it. But definitely for young young population, you should uh, repair all your uh, roots. One more question, sir. Uh, you said that you use fiber tapes also and fiber wires also. So I use uh, two suture, uh, this, uh, the fiber wires only, but there is an option. People do use suture tapes also now with different configuration. What number of tape would you... I, I'm not you using a suture tape, so I'm just because that... Yeah, exactly because the firing device which we have is yeah, suitable so for breaks. the suture, uh, the wire. fiber wire, not, yeah, the tape. not the tapes. But yes, tape is an option. You can shuttle it and in that method you can do it. Okay. 1.3 mm suture tape, you can just pierce. Huh. Yeah, so the option is there to use a tape. Thank you so much. My so, question to Dr. Nikhil, you have a wonderful presentation. So, I'm Dr. Shomodi from Kolkata. So, uh, sometimes yeah. this root repair, uh, after repairing in a long follow-up, you see these roots are not healing. Do you have yeah. say, any such problem? I'm we have not done any uh, MRI study or something because long-term uh, studies you will require this. Definitely the, jun the junction of the meniscus to the bone, that is maybe a, that the healing can be an issue. But clinically, these patients do very well. Yes, yes. I think Dr. Roshan can add to it. How long it takes for the symptoms to settle down? Symptoms actually, it, these uh, acute degenerative, uh, acute tears, when they come with a severe pop, one month, two months duration, they do very well once you repair it. As I showed that patient walking, they're very happy immediately in the next three to four weeks and they do well. And any other the pain goes well. Anchor, suture anchor is there described uh, very well, uh, one of our friend, Dr. Prathmesh Jain, about uh, the root fix anchor it is called, a soft tissue, a soft anchor. Sorry? Then you don't need a scorpion. Then you don't need a, uh, they have the different technique, they very minimal uh, uh, drilling is required in that to pull out your uh, suture anchor in the tunnel. But the anchor remains there, the attachment is closer to the, uh, the tear. So that's why they say ki it is a better uh, technique, but still not yet proven. Yeah. yeah, so it all depends how your excess is. Sometimes the table spine is prominent, so you have to shave that table spine off. So it, there is no worry of uh, doing that with a burr, as I showed in that technique. Nikhil, wow. yeah, Dr. Yeah. Roshan, go ahead. Yeah, Roshan uh, can, uh, regarding the question it. which uh, Dr. Samadip asked, uh, and what are the tears you leave? I think somebody was discussing. So there are multiple studies whether the root tear really heals or doesn't heal. There are n number of techniques which are described. But I feel the root avulsion technique which you showed was the commonest one which is performed and the maximum non-healing rates is with the same technique. So, uh, the, we don't know what exactly is the reason why. But the most important thing in any root repair and the one most important key message everybody in this room should carry is correction of alignment. So, unless you have a normal alignment, your root, rip is, uh, root repair is day one failure. So, unless you have a perfectly normal valgus alignment, even a 5 degree varus or 4 degree varus or 3 degree, which is normal varus as far as the knee replacement is concerned, is pathological when you have a root repair, root tear. So, unless you have a valgus alignment, your root repair is going to fail. Right. Malalignment is a cornerstone. Yeah. yeah. One more, uh, one question, Dr. Roshan and of course, Dr. Nikhil. Uh, the type 2C, it is 10 millimeters away from the actually the attachment of the root. And then we say, suppose sometimes it is too medial, the, this tunnel is too medial, then we say it is not anatomical. Mm -hmm. But actually the tear is away from this center point of the fixation of the posterior horn. And then still we say it is non-anatomic. So is there any need actually to get to this yeah. root? Because actually it is, the tear is not there. 
still we try to tend to get is too lateral towards the point. So, I will go in historical aspect. The root repair which is described by Dr. Rob Laprad in year 2011 or 12 rather. But the original root repair description came from India, Dr. Nicholas Antao. Nicholas Antao published in year 1996 in IJO where he same question what he asked the root tear away from the attachment of the root say 5 millimeter away from the attachment of the root to 10 millimeter away from the attachment of the root and he described is as a posterior medial fiber tear that time people neglected that paper but if you study the Rob Laprat's original article and Dr. Nicholas Antao's description of root, root tear and posterior medial uh, meniscal tear they are similar the issue was always same. Now coming back to the management. Management factor, if you try to pull that root back to the natural thing, you are distorting the anatomy of meniscus because there is a loss of meniscus when you are considering it. So once you have a loss of meniscus and you try to pull it, you are making patient worse. In that situation, best is to debride the root, do only the alignment correction and forget about it. Uh, I'd like to ask you a question, sir. Uh, in your root repairs, do you do a medial release to bring the root back to the insertion, as Dr. Leparad has described? Uh, yeah, in certain chronic stages, when the root is attached to the capsule, you have to do the release. I had shown in that uh, video. But yeah, it's uh, always a challenge. What Bhushan has mentioned, we find it the tears to be more medial, and we still have to find a perfect answer for it. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. It was a wonderful session. And thank you, sirs, for being a convener. And thank you, the participants. And thank you for wonderful questions.